Hello friends, Marcy here, and I am back with you to, um, I wanted to flush and fill this because um, it had quite the ink capacity. I can't tell you exactly how much right now, but I can look it up and put it on the screen um, at the website at Endless Pens where I purchased it. And I'm going to clean this out. It had the um, Robert Ulster uh, coffee date that it came with it as a special purchase. It was a free ink with the purchase of this um, coffee holic pen. Anyway, love this pen. It is a small pocket pen. It's the Opus 88 Mini, and it is a plunger um, style uh, eyedropper. So um, I've enjoyed using it. I loved the color, the shading of the ink um, in my journal, um, but I had an issue. <laughs> So, this gorgeous little cap with the coffee, and it has this nice clip. Um, I had laid the pen down on my desk without the clip, and guess what? Yes, you guessed it. Uh, it rolled into the floor, and boom. Let's see if I can get this. Look at my nib. So, I was like, oh no, that's never happened to me before. <laughs> so, I got online, and I actually ordered a um, some new nibs at Jet Pens, but look at how um, this is ink, uh, empty, but it still has an ink, a little bit of ink down in the feed. And um, so it does still write, even though it's bent. And um, I did want to new nib. Okay, I'm going to write new year, new nib for the new year. I did want to um, try to fix it, but the only like needle nose pliers I could find here at my house were in my little jewelry repair kit. And I was afraid that if I tried to straighten the nib, I compromise and weaken the metal. And so I thought, you know, I'm just gonna purchase a new nib. And got online at Jet Pens and I was able to find The replacement broad nib um, that is the Opus 88. I'll show you in here. So it is the Opus 88 in broad, which is what I have on here. But I thought as as long as I'm purchasing um, and have to pay the shipping, I'll go ahead and get um, a new nib, a new size, and get the stub. This is a 1.4 millimeter stub, which I think I'm going to add today. Um, little odd difference, though. I can show you. This one came with an, an O-ring, and this one did not. So I wasn't sure um, if or where I should use that. <laughs> so we'll find out. Um, but I'll be putting the 1.4 millimeter stub on with you today. And we're kind of learning this together. Um, when my problem occurred, I looked on YouTube for videos of someone else changing the nib on their little Opus 88 Mini. Couldn't find it. So um, we're learning together. And I'm hope, hoping that once I discover the process, that it will help you out. But um, after ordering and receiving my two new nibs, I was going through and reorganizing my pen um, supplies. And I found that the fine nib that I forgot when I ordered the pen, um, I just added an extra nib to it in a different size in case I didn't like the broad. Totally forgot about that, but no, I know I have it for later use. Anyway, so there's the Marcy saga. Yeah, here we go. Dealing with, you know, the fun that Marcy has um, with these issues. So to start, I'm, I am going to have to... This is an eyedropper, so I'm going to have to remove the grip section. And we're going to flush this out, clean this out. It might be easier in the sink as I do that. Um, and then I would flush this out right now, but I'm going to wait until after I take off the old nib and put on the new nib and flush through it. So hang in there with me. Um, you know, it may be easier for me to take the nib off as I have it attached to the body. So, here we go. This is gonna be simple enough, and it is dirty because it's still inked. Um, so 
So we're, I'm just gonna grip. I can use my little rubber goulet grip or I think I'm just gonna use this paper towel and give this a twist. I wasn't sure um, how to remove it, but once I saw the new one and then it was a twist um, little section there, that gave me a clue. So removing that was quite simple. So this is my bent one and I will probably um, attempt to play with this and fix it at a later time, you know, uh, just for experimentation's sake. But now that I have this removed, let me put the new one in. And again, I am putting in the 1.1 stub. Goodness. So I'm gonna save that O-ring in case I find later that I need it for something. Um, looking at this one, let me just pick this up. Looking at my old one, I don't see an O-ring attached anywhere here. So I'm not going to be using it because I don't see it at the bottom or around the nib section. But I'm going to just place it here. Screw in the new nib. And I'm gonna go clean this out at the sink and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and I'm just going to, so you come out nice, just running it under the faucet um, sink. Um, it's easier for me than using uh, jars of water and the bulb syringe, which it's totally doable, but it takes a little bit longer. And I'm going to put my old nib the bent one inside this um, bag with that o-ring that I'm not sure if I need yet. We'll find out as we proceed. And then I'll take it inside this box and I'm just going to make a note. I'm going to write myself a note on here to br a damaged broad nib so I know that that is there. All right, and this pen did come with the eyedropper when I purchased it. It came with a little um, eyedropper in the box. But I did not use the eyedropper because I didn't want to mess with cleaning that. Um, I just used my syringe. So instead of putting the coffee date, which I thought was going to be a permanent um, ink to use in this pen, because I love it. I mean, it was just amazing. Um, I was going to ink it with the coffee date again. But I'm looking at this little coffee cup here, and I thought about that cool mint that I just inked my... Um, platinum with and I thought you know it'd be fun to use the cool mint uh, for the month of January as a winter color and so we're, we're gonna do that today we're gonna use the cool mint and then when I flush it out I'll, I'll go back to the coffee date because I really enjoy that ink and I I do believe that the Robert Oster inks are becoming um, my favorite inks I'm just really enjoying their performance so um, using this syringe is much like the eyedropper you just have to put some ink inside and actually, oh, maybe I can get all get this sample vial emptied. That's what we got here. Um, don't know if I can measure this with you at level, so let me look up. And okay, it looks like it's about one and a half um, milliliters on the measure lines here. It's below, so just as you would an eyedropper, you just put it inside here. My plunger is down or all the way open. Yeah, it's, is, am I gonna be able to fit one and a half mils? Yeah, okay. So at least that helps me know the capacity of this um, barrel. I did have one and a half mils on here and it's full to the top. So now the question is, can I, can I insert my nib? there without pouring liquid out everywhere. Um, let's see, can we, I don't know. I don't know. Let me put it over an empty jar just in case. Okay, I lost a drop. I lost a drop in the jar and there's a little bit here. So, let me try, and I'm probably gonna open this up and just put some silicone grease um, 
around that just for safety's sake. Um, but I'm going to move my plunger down, see if I can get some ink into this feed, and we'll give it a writing test. Okay, be careful with letting that pen roll around because the last time I laid it on the desk without uh, the cap posted was when we had our issues. So, of course, all those issues are learning experiences, right? If things like that don't happen, then you don't have anything um, to experience and learn from. All right, I already see some ink coming down into the nib or the nib feed. I don't know if you can see the glisten, the light hitting at your angle. So let's give it a shot. And this is the Opus. Yeah, okay. Mini, okay, it's the Opus 88 Mini, I forgot. Opus 88 Mini, and I just changed to a stub 1.4 millimeter. And these stub nibs are so fun. Um, let's see, that looks like a D. All right, and we have the Diamine Soft Mint. Fabulous. Okay, as this dries, we'll see how that performs. I'm loving it. I'm thinking so far it is fun. And I'm not going to put the plunger down anymore yet. I'll do some more writing with it today. But let's cap this. And wow. I may have that too full. I may have to take out a little bit. We'll see. We'll see how far I can get my plunger down. But um, this pen is fairly new to me. I think I purchased it in September. And I only filled it once with a coffee date, wrote it out. And I've been waiting to um, flush and fill it for about a month. But I was waiting on my new nib. Hey, I just want to jump back in here with you and quickly um, add silicone grease around this... Um, nib grip section because um, I'm going to do it anyway. I thought I just may as well do it on camera with you. So to keep my eyedropper barrel from spilling, I'm going to put it vertically inside that empty jar, wipe off the threaded um, section on the grip, and then apply a little bit of, this is my Twisby um, I have so many Twisbees, and I'm grateful to have this uh, ready at hand. Actually, this is a new bottle. I'm going to have to get into it. Okay, so got into the bottle, and I'm just going to apply just a drop here and run it around with my finger for a good seal on that. I've never done that to this pen. Of course, this is the first time I've done a flush and fill on it, so. Anyway, at least I feel more comfortable with um, the seal on this. Thank you, Twisby, for providing that. And here we go. All right, go ahead and put my plunger all the way down and cap it and we are good to go. That ink looks beautiful on that pen. So thank you for joining me on this learning experience today. And I hope what I've um, done here helps you uh, with changing out your nibs. So thank you for spending some of your precious moments with me. You have a blessed day. Bye-bye.